Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Summer the Session Podcast. Today is one of the um, uh, Top of the Week episode. We have Go Steve Manuel. For those who don't know who Steve Manuel is, he's the person we used to call Screamer. <laughs> um, he has a, a long, long, long CV that we can't all probably can't type in terms of like what this man has done for our sport. So just a quick background there for some of us in the new age. I'm not talking about the old age because I know people will be talking about Tony Steven here, right? I'm talking about the new age. In the new age, Steve Manio is one of those guys that paved the way for some of us to start lifting weight and end up in GB team. So a lot of people have taken a lot of inspiration from Steve Manio. So now we have got Steve Manio on, on the podcast. So how are you doing, sir? Yeah, not too bad. Like I was telling you before, just nearly, nearly died of smoke inhalation. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, other than that, um, actually that was going to be a complete lie. So I was going to say I was feeling pretty good, but no, we had to walk there. Uh, well, some of us ran it, some walked it. We had to do a half marathon with work yesterday. I walked it because I couldn't be asked for that. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, just walking continuously for four and a half hours. My legs are fucked today. Like, so, yeah, I've got a free lift day tomorrow. So, I'm not really excited about that. So, we'll see what happens there. Is that oh. with Dylan? Yeah, that's with Dylan. The fucking yeah, and he's, he's not going to let you out of it either, is he? <laughs> the best cheerleader in British powerlifting. Yeah. Um, so again, let's go straight into it, Stephen. I know you took a break, a little bit of break from powerlifting for, I mean, I probably it was a short break and ended up being a few years. <laughs> a few years? <laughs> <laughs> I think it'll be eight years by the time I actually come back. Oh, yeah. Now, has it been eight already? No, sorry, sorry. It might be seven. I genuinely, I just, I mean, I really don't know when it kind of was, but I'm pretty sure it's seven, yeah. I think, I think, were you in, in Calgary in 2018? In where? Calgary in Canada in 2018. Were you oh, there? Fuck no. I think my so, last one was 17. Uh, uh, yeah. I think yeah. it was 17 because 2018, um, when I did the British, was the first year I think Stephen wasn't there. Because uh, I remember turning up, because that's when Josh started turning up and, and lifting in the 105s. Um, Stephen finally deemed it necessary to give someone else a spot in the 105. So we had, <laughs> we had two new lifters going to the 105s that year. I still remember that. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, I think it was, yeah, it was. 20- Josh and, and Famu Timi was 2019. Before that, it was Stephen. Yeah, definitely it was 2017 because I remember me meeting you for the first ever time I met you. It was in 2016 national in um, Morton College. I was talking to you and on that. And after that, that um, national, you took some time off. So tell us, tell us a bit about what have you been doing since? You know, I've seen you being on the stage as well, so you can talk about that. Sorry about that. <laughs> I told you I was gonna, I was gonna scratch at the chair. Little shit, man. Um. Honestly, I don't know what the fuck I've been doing, to be perfectly honest with you. So, obviously, I left in 2017. Yeah, just, like, definitely needed a break from, like, I just think just from competition in general, but specifically just powerlifting. Like, I put so much into it. I've done it from, I think I had my first comp at, like, 17 or 18 or something like that, and then... I have went through all the way till 28, 29, like no real breaks or anything like that. Because as you guys know, like it's not done in like Olympic cycles where the worlds are every four years or whatever. It's every year. So you just, you're constantly training for like to be improving your total for the next big goal, you know? So yeah, took a little bit of time off there. And oof, I mean, yeah, that was more of mental health more than anything. Mm-hmm. Like, don't really need to go too deep, but like I really wasn't in a good place when when I actually did end up leaving powerlifting, and part of that was me putting unnecessary pressure on myself for a sport where, if we're being honest with you, I'm not going to make a fucking living directly through lifting. <coughs> so I was like putting all this unnecessary pressure on me for, on myself for something that I didn't really think like, that I realised in the end wasn't necessarily worth me putting all that pressure on myself for. So I was like, right. And I've never really been good at, like, balance. I'm better with it now, but I just kind of go all in. It's all or nothing. And for me, 
if I was taking a step back, I need to completely disconnect and just get completely out of it. So, yeah, I mean, I just started trying to find other things to, like, kind of get invested in with training and things like that. I started to appreciate walking and, like, just, like, more low-level forms of, of exercise and everything else like that. Then eventually started getting the bug for some kind of like competitive thing again decided to go the bodybuilding route just to do something different and learn um yeah that was awesome really did enjoy that however i don't think i think after i competed i'm pretty sure i didn't get born after like six or seven months okay generally like genuinely I, I didn't get a bone after about six or seven months because of how much it fucks your hormones. Like, <laughs> so yeah, maybe that's why a lot. Maybe that's why a lot of people like actually do that assisted. I think like a little bit of added testosterone when you can't get it up might not be the worst thing in the world. <laughs> is, is it because of the massive cuts? Then is, is it the food related or is it just? I don't. I genuinely don't know enough about that. But what I will say about mine is. Um, it was pretty much like a two, two and a half year slow, gradual could be going from being a fat hunt to then getting on the stage. So, like, I dropped about maybe 25 30 kilos slowly over the course of two, two and a half years. Um, and didn't really do any refeeds and or anything like that. I didn't really like have anything where I went back up higher and then back down, back up higher and back down. It was just kind of a very, very slow, gradual drop over the course of a couple of years. So maybe that's what it was. I just kind of went too low from what I was used to a couple of years back. And then, yeah, I totally messed with hormones on that. Like, but it was fun. I was part of the ride. You learn, you learn something every day with it, don't you? Yeah. So you, did, you didn't get a nutritionist. It was it was it straight bodybuilding? Did you get a bodybuilding coach? Was there someone like leaning into that side of things, or did you just go fuck this? I'm just gonna do it myself. Uh, I did it myself up to a point, and then I got one of my buddies who uh, actually used to powerlift as well. Uh, so he was on the junior equip team at the same time as me. A guy called Ben Mallinson. Uh really really good guy, very very knowledgeable. And uh, just same kind of same kind of personality as me. He's just like he'll just say it how it is and everything else like that. And he lifted in power lifting up until I think he kind of left at the end of juniors. I think he kind of saw. I don't think you'll mind me saying this. I think we've had these kinds of conversations before. I think he kind of saw where he was at. He won a couple of British titles, and then he saw where the seniors were at, and he was just like, "Fuck this." He was always more interested in bodybuilding anyway. So he kind of, he used competitive powerlifting to get a good base for his physique to then go and be a decent bodybuilder. So when he got to a point where he, where he kind of aged out, he was just like, he, he was happy to move on and move on, move into bodybuilding from there. So he's really knowledgeable about this sort of stuff. And like he, like he, he, he knew way more than what I did and got him to help me out basically and like, yeah, it was good as well because with something like that, it's like I could have paid a coach and eh, it might have been it might have been different, it might have been better, it might have been worse. But with him, he lives down in bloody I quite remember where it is, like UK or something like that. So I never really see him. I was just like, he's willing to do this for me. It's gonna be a good way for me to keep connected with him. So I was like checking in with him all the time and things like that. And yeah, so I just was more than happy to kind of go with him and do it because, yeah, it was just a little bit of a mess around for me more than anything. Yeah. Um, I know Mo has joined us a little bit uh, later there. Um, so, Stephen, this, me, I had just one question in my head because I know if there is people that would be in a better place to answer this, probably could be you. How are you finding the, the landscape of British powerlifting at the moment? By the way, before you answer that, I remember before me considering this sport as a sport in terms of like working to the level where we are now is i spoke to you in 2016 and i asked you one question i said well, you probably don't you don't remember anymore anyway because you know any you're not getting any younger so i think i asked you welcome to jury <laughs> <laughs> so i asked i said 
what what do I need to do to get into that um, GB team? All you said to me was like, just make sure you don't give up, right? Whatever you do, just don't give up. You get it eventually, and then look at where we are today. So, um, my question is, how's the landscape from your days to now? I genuinely don't know, man. Like, what if there's one thing about me with powerlifting in general? <clears throat> I've never really been somebody who like. Like, I, I'm not somebody who will stalk people and things like that. I won't really look out and seek out who's doing what. Mm-hmm. Like, for me, it's just like, I like powerlifting. I like the physical aspects of it. But when it comes to, like, actually who's doing what and who's doing what, when, like, I never really know if I'm perfectly honest with you. I don't even know what the calendar looks like anymore, if I'm perfectly honest with you. I we don't know what the cool. calendar looks like either. So. <laughs> no one knows what the calendar looks like. <laughs> <laughs> We're all in the same boat. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fair enough then. At least I'm on the level playing field in some aspect. <laughs> I haven't got a fucking clue what I'm going to do when I come back here. <laughs> but no, to, to, if I'm perfectly frank and perfectly honest with my answer here, I have not got a clue what the landscape is. I don't know what the standard's like anymore. Um... I don't have a clue what the world records are. And yeah, like I'm just, I'm yet to have fun. And if I start looking into all that stuff, I'm then going to start like setting potentially unrealistic targets for myself. And it's just, it's not going to be fun anymore. And that's the only thing I want to do because I want to have fun. Whatever happens, happens. So to be honest with you, don't know what the landscape looks like right now. So you have fun. You're a fat cunt now. What weight class are you coming back on? I'll be a 105. <laughs> Say again? I'll be a 105. I'm not right now, but I'll be a 105. What are you weighing at the oh, moment? Yeah, no. I've not got a clue. I'm weighing myself yet. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I know it's not good. I'll tell you that, lads. Fucking hell, that cat's in me draw, man. <laughs> <laughs> Little shit. 105 is in a good place at the moment. That's I don't know if it is anymore. Mo changes what weight class he's in 47 times a week. So we Why don't are you know, stressing? All I've, said is, all I've said is, right? Generally speaking, all I've said Mo, is I might do a me as a 120. In generally the speaking, speaking Mo is a 105. The last two weeks. Generally speaking, Mo is a 105. So it's, it's his turf oh, that you're going to be stepping into. <laughs> I'm going to have to get these cuts out, lads. Go, piss off. <laughs> <laughs> oh my days! <laughs> uh, hey, class. So yeah, so no, I've got I've no. got a quick question for you, Stephen. Right, yeah. my first question was what what body weight did you compete on the bodybuilding stage? So what did you cut down to to be stage oh. ready? What was your body weight then? I think I came in at about eighty five something. Oh, eighty five. Yeah, about eighty five something. I came in at. You got during stretch stressing now. Look at him. <laughs> but you like... you were you were like so when you when you first of all I, I want to there are gonna be two sections actually both in relation to body weight actually so first of all when I remember your bodybuilding phase and when you started cutting down towards 85 I guess you hovered around 90 you got very lean and there was a lot of muscle tissue you had built over the years that as soon as you stripped away that that body mass you just looked insane like insane shape did you ever, and obviously you mentioned now that obviously your, your testosterone levels or your hormones got messed up with the cut and everything. Did you ever consider like sitting around, because you were 85, did you ever consider sitting around 93 and then just retaining that muscle mass and seeing whether you could ever translate back into powerlifting? Or you were purely focused on getting lean bodybuilding route? Like for that, I was fully set on the bodybuilding competitions. I wasn't really, I, I wasn't even... I mean, God knows where my head was at with regards to powerlifting after that, but I don't even think I was planning on coming back to powerlifting at that point. So to answer the question, no. <clears throat> um, and what, another thing about what you said there, I think it was like, was I not, but was I planning on hovering around and then coming back to 93? Easier said than done. When you <laughs> get that fucking lean and you've been depriving yourself for that long, very 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 hard to not just go and eat everything in sight and i had every intention of <clears throat> like being able to kind of switch it off but nah that was too hard to switch off and i mean it took, it took a good few months like a very very long time but 
I mean, I've ended up getting back up heavy again. I still, I don't look too bad, but I mean, I didn't, I don't know what I look like when I finished that competition, you know? Okay. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Um, the uh, second body with one thing, sorry, there's one yeah. thing I think it was Lane Norton said it. <clears throat> it's sorry. very hard to separate psychology from physiology. Mm, so, physiologically, okay. we all know the right things to do, but psychologically, it's very hard to do the right things all of the time. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, that, that completely makes sense. Yeah. You can have a plan, but executing the plan is a different yeah. situation entirely. Okay, then. So, you heard uh, it's not easy for me to eat. You heard that? What was that? Um, I said Basically, that. Durin's Durin's like fucking has nightmares and PTSD about fucking calories. If you give him more than three calories, he just rolls around on the floor crying to himself. That's the problem. <laughs> I just, I, he was on. He sent me a picture of his his diet, and I thought it was his breakfast. It was his entire day's fucking eating. I just, I just <laughs> looked at it and got depressed. Go on, Mo. Ask the question. Durin's is chatting moths. Oh well, I'll, I'll keep it because we can go. Obviously, I'm ridiculously fascinated by your bodybuilding, like your bodybuilding saga. Um, I think you can always go back if you want to, if, you, if there's anything you want to do in that field. But the physique you pop on the stage, ridiculously impressive. Honestly, that was motivation as hell to watch that um, journey. Although it would have stressed you out in different ways. Um, I wanted to ask now. So you've done the cut down to eighty fours. Looking at your powerlifting history, right, you were a phenomenal 93 back in 2014-2015. You, you hit a 785 kilo total, give or take. This was in South Africa, 2014, 785 kilo total. And then roughly about four months later, you were fully fledged 105. Is there a reason why you, was that like a, a weight class jump that you wanted to do? Or was there just like a situation that happened during that period that just caused you to move up? I think I did one more at ninety three before I went to one hundred and five. Okay, so what we what we, what we, I can Don't see know. online is South I Africa twenty fourteen, June, and then was twenty fifteen Finland. Twenty fifteen Finland, and I was one hundred and five, wasn't I? No, so I've got a UK competition at one hundred and five when <laughs> one hundred four point four. This was the British Men's Classic. Okay, so, um, so this would have been like November time, October. <sighs> So, I mean, I guess I've just been cutting a shitload of weight. And there was, there was probably a few things for that. I mean, obviously, we're talking a long time, nearly 10 years ago now. So I am kind yeah. of connecting a lot of dots based on kind of, <laughs> and so that might be how, I, how my mind is now. Uh, but before South Africa, I remember I couldn't compete at the British Championships that year before because I had a car crash about like a week out. So I was mm. in a car crash a week out, so I couldn't compete. Like, I went from doing me opener for a triple that day and then not being able to squat 60 the next day because, like, I was too, because I was so fucked up on the car crash. Mm. So I had to pull out with the British Championships. Um, yeah, funny the kid things people say. Oh, yeah, he's pulling out because he's competing against Tom Martin. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Tom Martin used to be a 105. I was also, you know, no, no, he was, 90, he was 93. Was he like, oh, so it would have been 93? Oh, yeah, he was 93. So That's that, insane, imagining so, Tom Martin as a 93. Yeah, so that happened. Um, then, because I'd had a good track record and obviously was like, like one of the best 93s, or so obviously, like, I was the best 93. Then Tom Martin came around. Then there was a debate whether I was still the best 93 or not. Um, so because of that, they still took me over to South Africa. So I basically didn't rehab properly. Like, I had the basically just keep testing the waters, seeing how things were, and then managed to get up to a point where I totaled 785. So I think I'd had that car crash, and then with less of a year, managed to get a 15 kilo PB or something like that on me total. Um, yeah. And I just think, like, at that point, it was just like, I think more at 93 was going to be too much because I was... Like, I still feel my back now from that experience. Mm. Like my back still isn't fully recovered, really. Like I've, if 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 ever anything pulls, it's always that exact same point that did that I was feeling when I was after the car crash there. Yeah. So I just think it was probably going to be too much, and I just made the decision, like you know, 
I was already a chore at 93. Why not be an even bigger fucking chore? And I probably got more potential <laughs> in the 105s. Okay. okay. So yeah, to answer the question, I think that's probably kind of like what, what my mindset was like back, 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 uh, back then. Okay. So who back back during that time when you were 93 or 105, who were the big names that you used to compete against? Because you've mentioned Tom Martin. Not a lot of new age li- like power lifters would know Tom Martin really because he's been suffering some injuries. On, on he's, He moved to untested. Yeah. Massive puller, and but not a lot of people. He's not really competed that often since he pulled like maybe three ninety, three eighty. But yeah. back in back during those time, ninety three is one of five. Who were the big names around that you were always chasing or competing against? British, yeah, British. I can't even remember half of them. Fair enough. Um, Dave Carter. Is one guy who I seriously look up to. Not a lot of people know about Dave Carter. Um, so he was a '93 Yorkshire Northeast. So like he was my division, and I think he won like the British a few years uh, as a Masters. As a Masters, so he won the Open, being in the Masters age category. Uh, he had an absolutely phenomenal deadlift, and I competed against him a few times. And that was kind of like the first guy that I saw at a competition. Uh, I was like, yeah, yeah, in fact, yeah, he did do my first competition. Um, and then I kind of saw him, like, he, he, I was just like, he's phenomenal. Like, I want, so like, my, my kind of first target was beat Dave Carter. And then it took a few years. I think I was 18 when I had my first competition. Yeah. I think I might have beat him when I was like 21 or 22 or something like that. Um, maybe before, I can't really remember now, but. At some point, I did beat him, and I was just like, "Yeah, like this is awesome!" Like, because he was always in contention for medals um, at the British Championships, and yeah, just an absolutely phenomenal deadlift. I think he was pulling like three forty, three fifty, or something like that. And in the ninety threes, in mid to late forties, the decent, that's decent, like. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, he was a really good guy. Um, who else was the? See, this is what I mean, like. Internationally, it was stacked, though, wasn't it? At that point, internationally was ridiculous. So I remember from the equip days, there was a guy called Eugenie Kuzman, a uh, Russian guy. Uh, I'm gonna forget a shit ton of these as well. Like my memory is not very good. Uh, That's what I said. But... You're getting old. I didn't joke when I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> Just tell him to shut up. Tell him to shut up. Uh, <laughs> No, because he's fucking right. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, my biggest rival at uh, 93 was uh, Krzysztof Fierzbicki, the Polish guy who mm. then moved to the 105 and mm-hmm. think he did well at, what's that fucking one called, man? The, the, the World Games. Yeah. World yeah, Games. he did well in that. I think he tried to break a, did he try and break a 120 record there or something? Yeah, I think so. I think at the World Games, he, he on the deadlift. I remember he pulled, I think four twenty or four ten something like that. Because that was yeah, it. I was equipped though, wasn't it? Yeah, you were equipped. A fucking strong one guy. Yeah, I try. Yeah, I tried he's, to he's, break he's his deadlift. He's world raw powerlifting now or something. Mm-hmm. I think. Yeah, go on, Mo. I tried to. I tried to play and um, break his deadlift record. It was. It was quite heavy off the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, <laughs> I remember I remember being on the balcony at Sheffield and Mo's coming out and I'm screaming my lungs out and he goes to pull it and he's just like nah walks off the stage and I'm just there like a fucking melon still screaming away at Mo to try and pull me, and me sitting it there, didn't like, even try because I was sitting <laughs> I was literally sitting between Tony Cliff and Jordan right I was there and then Tony Cliff said to me you think he's gonna pull it because if you pull that at 391 He's going to beat you on your IPF point. And I was like, I don't want him to beat me on my IPF point, but I want him to pull it, though. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Then again, when he could it, I was like, I've got mixed feelings now, man. Fuck sake. See, you know, <laughs> you know who the haters are now, Mo? Because that pull would have been the heaviest pull in GB. So I would have pulled, what, a week later, you would have taken it off me. And I was still screaming my lungs out. Whereas this guy right here was hoping you failed. 
No, I wasn't no, hoping. No. I, felt. I had mis- you I just had said mis- it. What do you mean mixed right? feelings? You don't have mixed feelings about your boy. That's how it sounded. That's how it sounded. I'm not gonna lie. It sounded like you were hoping I failed it. No, 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 Stephen. It's small men syndrome. You know what? Actually, now that now that I think about it, Stephen small man syndrome. I got I got some my bunny key band from Jurins and Joey, and I was cramping aggressively on the day. Yeah. Now that I'm putting two and two together, he, he gave you some fake. He gave you some fake shit. Basically, <laughs> it was just baby powder mixed with um, mayonnaise and fucking. Um. So yeah, Stephen, how's how's training going in terms of? Because I know, um, I saw a couple of your stories. Um, you said you want to hit a particular number before you actually get your membership in and come back to the forum. Yeah. And have fun with uh, the the giants like we are. So, which is on us. What do you mean, giants like we are, Todd? You're a giant. You know, if, uh, Steve, if Durance could suck his own dick, he would. Yeah. He would, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get that impression. If he was chocolate, he'd eat himself. He would, mate. <laughs> he, he, would, he wouldn't even think twice about it. He just hey, sucks himself nah, It might be too much day. calories for him, so it might actually like, <laughs> split over a week. You know what, hey, Durance? Hey, hey, hey. So I think mean, Stephen on this one, you just what three men against one. All of you guys been one of fives. What the hell is wrong with you? Anyway, you know, um, you, you know that day back in 2016 when he asked me what you had to do in the GB team to get yeah. in the GB team. I wish I just said give up. Yeah, I wish I just said just stop now. If you, Man, if you said to them, Jer- if you Jer- said Jer- to him, got then, another story. He, he would have left. Jones has got another story where someone did tell him to give, give up, and no, he, yeah, he reminds us. What? Yeah, he reminds yeah. us every single time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, if I so if I mention the name, you remember the person, but we're not here to 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 name people, right? Well, mention the name. No, the person told me literally word to word. He said to me, "We already have Owen and um, what's the other and Bedford as some of the top eighty threes in the country. For you to chase them will be pointless. So you might as well just like move down or move up or just chase Commonwealth. Don't chase oh, the team. So, but. When I met that person at the international, I looked him in the face. I was like, how you doing, mate? He was like, I already knew you were going to make it. Who was it? Just mention them. Anyway. Damn. You always say, oh, I don't give a fuck. He goes, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, but then he doesn't one, mention no, names. No, no. This one, I give a fuck because he's a legend in our country and we don't want to ruin his name, tarnish his name. So, oh, anyway. it's Tony Cliff, isn't it? I was thinking the same. I was thinking the <laughs> same. It's Tony. It's Tony. It's fucking Tony. Was it Tony? Like, oh, we like not, an off this no, podcast. Tony, you're Tony. a fucking monster. No, I don't want to create trouble. It's not Tony. It's Tony. It's Tony. Blame Stephen. Stephen is the one that says your name, not me. I Tony, didn't... I can't believe you shot at that poor boy's dreams. <laughs> anyway, what is the number that you... Uh, what, how are you planning? Or, so the question is like, you said you're planning to hit a particular number before you buy a membership. Right? Yeah. So how is that going? in terms of like getting to that target? I mean, I've only done one free lift day. That was last week. I got 7.10 last week. Should have, It would have been 7.30, but... <laughs> fucked up with the deadlift. Shock horror. The last deadlift fell out of my hand. <laughs> so, basically, you are on track. <laughs> so I want to get to 7.80. Okay. Yeah. Oh, like, it, it won't take long to get there. Like, mm-hmm. to be honest with you, that's a number that I've just pulled out my ass as well. There's absolutely no thought behind it. When I turned up last week with Dylan, I just went, yeah, like, it was like, before I'd even picked up a weight, I just said, right, I'll give myself 750. If I can get 750, then I'll get a membership and I'll compete because 750 is respectable. I'm not going to turn up. Because, like, for me, I genuinely don't care all that much. But... I just know that people are going to be expecting some decent weights to be on the bar and shit like that. And I can't be arsed with just, like, coming in and under-delivering. So, mm. 750, if I can get to that point in training, that's respectable. And then, I wasn't, I didn't have a clue what I was going to be able to squat. Like, the heaviest I've had on my back all year was 200. So then, started moving. 200, obviously felt good because I knew that I'd have that on my back and when you when you do have a good training background, like those kinds of numbers, can, they're still manageable. So then I started... To be honest to with you, Stephen, like, you're training pure gym, right? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I'll go, two, two, I'll, I'll go to a gym called Vision on a Sunday with Dylan now. Yeah. yeah, I just yeah. 200 kg in pure gym is about 
250 once oh, you actually that's... get decent equipment. <laughs> I'm, a fucking, I'm a fucking god in pure gym, man. <laughs> <laughs> People are like, oh my fucking word, who's this? <laughs> Some random there. points. I know you're training pure gym. Do you find it interesting now that you see... Do you train in the one in town? Or where's yeah, your yeah. pure gym based? Do you find it interesting that you see kids coming to the gym with SPD kit and SPD belt compared to like five, ten years ago? Yeah. More, it's, a lot of people will be looking at you saying, what the fuck are you doing in that corner there? It's really nice to see. Do you know what, the, do you know what my favourite part of, pure, my, of my pure gym is? Yeah. The same me lifting heavy weights, but nobody knows who the fuck I am. It's fantastic. <laughs> I've been gone long enough. Nobody knows who the fuck I am, so I just I keep quiet. Like that, that, that I was like, guy came up with the other day. He was like, Oh, you got any cuts coming up? It's like, Ah, I'm gonna be here for a while. I, I don't really know. And he just he, he didn't know who I was. It was fucking brilliant. <laughs> but honestly, I, I I hate it when, like, it, if I bump into somebody in a gym who knows what I've done because it's just like I can't get away and I just want to focus on my training. Mm. Like, I like talking to people and things like that, but like. I hate talking about myself in that regard. And when it comes down to that sort of stuff, like if, if I can remain anonymous in that place, that will be perfect for me. That like let's get to do what I want and then go. But it won't it, it won't last for long. So I think a few of them actually do compete in the YNEs. So they probably are gonna see me compete at some point and then yeah, it'll be fun. Like, it'll be fun to get you back on the platform, man. Definitely. You're like a you're like more, a you are, more, you, are, you are the same division as him, isn't it? Hey, see the legend come back. I'm I'm still dealing with Sam Watt, who's M M one or M two. So, fuck it, hell, add another one in. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna yeah. ask you, um, Stephen, quick question because I've been I've been I'm a fan. Honestly, I am a fan of you. Um, because I followed your journey when I first started, <clears throat> and then um we had um Greenfield, who unfortunately has left the one hundred fives. He's left powerlifting in general. Was a massive oh, fan. He? he was there. My yeah, he's no, he's gone into the army now. Um, what back in twenty, he's not doing CrossFit. What do you mean army? He's, he's yeah, he army. joined the army. He's, he's, he joined he's... the army. The CrossFit army. Yeah. No, no, no. no. <laughs> yeah. so, he just he just runs around throwing rogue t-shirts at people. Fucking, <laughs> fucking oh, general muscle. I, I didn't know that. Okay. No, no, no. So he he started doing CrossFit. Compete. I don't know if he competed really, but he got he got down. He cut down a lot. Um, mm-hmm. I think he started I around '93. Yeah, and then he's joined the army now. Um, I just follow him here and there because I keep on telling Pape he needs to take his squat record. So I'll just send him a message when it finally happens. Yeah, Pape <laughs> built the same as him, isn't he? Like you know, Josh in his prime. That's you know, what Pape built like. That. What's, what's Josh? Josh will post it again next week just to remind you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's my well, favorite I... thing in the world because he just he randomly deletes his post and then he uploads his world record squat again like once every like two weeks it just oh, comes up again. I'm just like he doesn't does he? He does, he does, he's one of them. Oh what a <laughs> fucking twat. <laughs> I don't even know where my world record video is. Yeah, it was on Facebook, <laughs> but I haven't I don't post it. Oh, fair enough. I was going to ask you, right, 2016 IPF4 Championships, Texas, um, in America. Yeah. A lot of people, a lot of people keep on going back to that meet. You had your own battle. First of all, I wanted to ask about your battle because it was you, Ellie Burks. That was tight. Like you mentioned earlier, grip, missed deadlifts. There's history there. Um, But also that competition, it's one that's been mentioned multiple times in history. You know, we had the John Hank, Brett Gibbs era. Apparently the the meet was insane. There were a lot of... So what was that competition like there? What was the energy like in the venue, um, first of all? And then what was that competition between you and Ellie Burke? Because you had 320 in your hand, which would have secured your win easily. But what happened on that day? Can you you just relieve that moment again for us? Fucking hell. Well, (laughs) remember... I'll tell you about the atmosphere. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you about the atmosphere. That was one of the most, like, I don't want to say electric because it sounds fucking cringy as hell. But, like, just, that was, like, that was probably the first time where I've just been, like, fuck me, this is cool. So just like everyone's there who everyone's there who loves powerlifting. And I know that's the case at World Championships anyway. 
but it's just it's different when it's America for some reason. Like I just think it's a case of with it being in America, I think it actually genuinely brought a lot of people from like more people's families who were competing for America. And genuinely, I think a few people that just had no horse in the race. There was no relations that were there. They just like powerlifting. So they just came and watched the competition. So there was just like hundreds of people in this place. I forget what the fucking building was, but I remember Killeen, Texas being just a weird place. Like <laughs> it, was, it was just army bases, basically. It was just like barracks and like we competed in some convention center, I think. And then the nearest thing was about a 10, 15 minute Uber drive away. And that was just like Applebee's, some wing place, something else for food. And that was about it. Sounds like America. Yeah. <laughs> I saw a fucking, I saw an Asda, a Walmart that had guns. That was fucking weird. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, sports shop called Dick's. I think Duran's fucking shops there, the wanger. <laughs> you know what? I, I was going to say, before, I was going to I was going to say, you know, because you mentioned 2016 and then Duran's got all aggy about it. It's because that was the year he disqualified on a, he fucking bombed out on a powerlifting meet. So, Why do you because, have to say that? No, listen, Mo mentioned 2016 and all of a sudden you're getting aggy with Steve and I'm just like, this is the reason why. Because he's, he's there like, no, 2016. <laughs> I, but uh, no, I mean, that competition was, it was really fucking cool. Uh, obviously, I mean, by far the most heartbreaking competition I had because that was the one where I was on to win. Like, if I just could have kept a hold of even my second deadlift, it was a very good chance I was winning that. So, yeah, that was very, very hard to kind of come back from mentally. But one thing I will say is, as amazing as the atmosphere was there, it also gave me one of my most, one of the cringiest things I've ever seen in powerlifting happened at this competition. So I don't know how much this gets spoken about, but I remember, oh my God, I think Tony Cliff was wearing a fucking cowboy hat at the time as well. Have you seen the picture of Tony <laughs> No, I, I need think, to see this. I think someone's like being injured on the on the platform or something like that. Everyone's like so concerned, and then you just see Tony Cliff just drinking a beer with this <laughs> cowboy hat on. <laughs> it's one of the best things I've ever seen. But yeah, I'm sure it's like some super heavyweight guy gets injured, and then he's just there, just fucking drinking a beer with a cowboy hat on because he's done. He's done for the week. Ah, oh, it's funny as hell. But oh, yeah, story, a picture somewhere. one of the cringiest things I have ever seen at a powerlifting competition happened at, in Texas, in Killeen, Texas. So obviously, you know, you, you, you guys have all been the world, right? Yeah. 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 So the winners. It would have been awkward if SP was there. Yeah. <laughs> but I was a host. He he hasn't been to world. So I just I wish he was here to be honest because I would have just that would have been set, set it off real. You want to turn your camera off? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. You guys are little, like the winner. They played the national anthem for that country. Mm. So I don't know. Forget what weight class it was. Some Yank won. Some American won. Um, and the go to play the national anthem. The sound system wouldn't work couldn't figure it out so then out of nowhere completely impromptu all the americans in the audience started singing the national anthem it was so fucking cringy but it was awesome at the same time like i was there just like what the fuck these are like <laughs> like no country loves their country like america like yeah. nah, that's, that's i the, couldn't give yeah. a fuck about britain they like <laughs> 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 no country loves their country like America. It's fucking wild. Yeah, they get super aggy about anything said about them as well, don't they? Yeah. You know, like, for example, you know, USAPL meet that just happened now. Like, so USAPL Nationals is happening because USAPL slipped from the IPF. They've made their own specific USAPL combo rack, USAPL IPF, like plates. Aye? You know, yeah. everything branded America. So. They, they love themselves. What the fuck 
did happen with this? Because I remember like vaguely something happening, but I haven't got a clue, me. So do America knock out the world? They do, do now. To... It's powerlifting America. They've they've split. There's two separate um, federations in America now, both drug tested. One's drug tested through WADA and one's drug tested through themselves, I think, as far as I'm aware. Right. So well, it, it all kicked off and there was drug testing happening in America. They were doing apparently quite a lot of drug tests, but they were doing it in-house. And the IPF said, you can't do that. You need to do it through WADA. Um, and there were some questions raised whether they were legitimate or not. And then it, loads of shit kicked off and they split off as far as I'm aware. Correct me if I'm wrong. No, nah, that's that's pretty much a rough breakdown of it. Um, IPA, well, USAPO have a policy where they do 10% testing at all competitions. So they always guarantee to test. So they were testing hundreds of lifters on a regular basis. But IPF stepped in and said, hey, according to IOC regulation, all your tests need to be done via WADA, not in-house testing. Now, there are federations like Canada, for example, and I believe maybe Australia or someone help, um, someone else who does all the testing on the WADA level for nationals and then all the regionals and everything else can be done in-house with cheaper options. Um, But America was, America was just very, we don't want to be restricted by IOC or WADA standards. We want to do our test because we believe, and we don't want to spend money. It was, it was just a dick swinging context basically. And they basically ended up doing their own thing, which I think they wanted to do originally because they're doing, they're doing USAPL open worlds. Now, apparently next year. Come and be a world champion. Come and be an American world champion. <laughs> so, world is, so is this yet <clears throat> this yet another sport? What they are just trying to just basically create be world champions at them. Do you know what I mean? So like so like whoever wins this USAPL, do they consider themselves a world champion? Because yes. they've won USAPL. Yeah. So basically yeah, the NFL and NBA. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Where, we're gonna play. We're gonna play against thirty-one other American teams, and then who <laughs> wins the Super Bowl? They're gonna be the world champions, but no other country can enter it. Fuck off, man! Yo, so you haven't you haven't heard the best thing yet. You know they got USAPL England. What? Yeah. yeah. So they've, they've they've got USAPL Korea. And they've put they've got USAPL England, and they're gonna do USAPL. So. Yeah, the United USAPL States Hong of Kong. America powerlifting England is going to be a, a a thing, a federation, and and they're they're, they're planning on going country to country oh, to get it sorted. Basically, uh, just oh, a random man. update for you boys, though, because I've been watching a live stream. Um, the president of USAPL literally announced on the stream saying that there will be an England. Well, <laughs> he's still called a USAPL England, but he said there there will be a USAPL England federation set up next year. And they're looking to do some sort of European tour with a few countries. That they're setting this up apparently. So we'll be hearing some more updates from them. <laughs> Who the fuck do they think they are, man? Yeah. <laughs> There'll be people in the UK that will join that as well. That's the worst. Oh, well, thing. Of course all the, will, man. Yeah, all the new juniors that love the Rondell, Russ Hype, they're all Fucking gonna just you'll have you'll have you'll have Flight One, Majid Suleiman, and Ishtiak <laughs> Nabi. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm going on record. I'm going on record on this podcast here. Whoever joins USAPL England's a fucking gimp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's a it's a bit of a bit of a weird one to be feel honest. Feel free to unfollow me if you don't like that and you feel like and you're joining that federation. But if you join that federation, you're a gimp. Oh, days. British powerlifting. Nah, you've got to keep it with British powerlifting. Like. If, like obviously the sport's huge anyway, but if we're going to keep the sport growing in England, like a much smaller country compared to America, <clears throat> we need to keep as many lifters in British power lifters as we possibly can. Mm. So, do not join USAPL England. Like they don't <laughs> as successful enough. We don't need them. You don't need more lifters with the USAPL. Everything needs to stay British power lifting if you really do want powerlifting to keep growing in this country the worst thing that you could have would be some kind of a split yeah then it's like well all the best really competing against the best like no do not join that federation I well, think we it's, 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 anyway 
the other thing is, <laughs> even some of these top tier lifters in the USAPL, they coming back to IPF. Yeah. That just tells you all. You know what I mean? They've done their job in the because at the end of the day, like Perkins' performance, for instance, but I'm not really gonna talk in too much detail about it. He is a 75 kilo lifter, a total uh, 851 kilo. Yes. Do you know who per- Do you know who Perkins is, by the way, Stephen? Austin Perkins. I'm pretty sure I've heard the name. Like I saw yeah. that video. I saw that video today. Like, oh, I think, okay, 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 okay. I think Tony put it on his wall or something. Oh, on his yeah. wall, fucking hell, on his story. I think I've seen it on there. Like, that's a fucking phenomenal total. Like, is it 74? Yeah. 70, 74. 74.2. Yeah. Can't be in 75 kilo class, yeah. Ah, oh, so they've got the wrong weight classes as well. Yeah, yeah, so they've got one tenth. Uh, 110 or 105. They don't have 105. So basically, what I was about to say is, as much as they haven't got that much talent and that much strength in that uh, federation, you're not competing against anybody. And now they want these guys want to test the, the, the other side of the pool, how the world looks like. So I mean, how would I be able to fare to travel abroad and compete against some of the best lifters in the world? And now, let me correct that though. I don't. I don't think they want to test. So I think. Hopefully, I don't get any lashback for this. I think a lot of the Americans think they're a lot better than the rest of the world. Of course, they do. Of course, they do. Yeah, and also, <laughs> so they're not. They're not. Of they're not coming. Do. Their idea is not to come to the IPF to compete. Their idea is to come to the IPF to go to Sheffield and get money and go back to USAPL. So I don't know if they if they're looking if they're coming over with the idea that oh, I'm going to test it myself over the ball. Now, when they do come to the IPF, they will realize it's a completely different playing field, and obviously all these external variables like traveling, European judges they don't give a shit about you, you know, are completely different. But as of now, I think the Americans are very up their ass thinking that they're going to blow everyone out of the water when they come over. So yeah, Yo, that's such a nice soundbite to go on and tag Mo in. <laughs> yeah, don't tag me. <laughs> no, what do you mean? You got to say with your chest, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when people coming to you, Mo, saying, where's the, where's the 391? <laughs> you know? So you don't let anyone breathe? Oh, I mean, I if, think you are, if you I are think... looking for sound bites, if you are going to use anything, make sure you use the one where I said anybody who joins USAPL England is a gimp. <laughs> Don't worry. Don't worry. We will. Thank you. Because <laughs> nah. the thing is, like, again, with uh, Americans, again, I think, Stephen, you touched to this one. You said they're such a big nation, right? They have got such a massive, massive talent pool. They think. Again, they're on top of everybody. You know, they don't give a shit about anybody else that thinks they're good or anybody. I mean, fair enough. Like, Indy pulled a world record with three hundred and eighty-five point eighty-six point five kilos a world. We, we spoke about this, but you still get American thinking, "Oh yeah, but we have got this lift in America can pull four hundred. Who yeah. gives a fuck? Drum in. So they don't celebrate other people's success. Mm-hmm. I can literally easily say that. I don't see any Americans celebrating any other person's success around the world. They don't even celebrate each other's success. They don't. Yeah, you get more people from GB celebrating American success yeah. than Americans celebrating oh, American success. Yeah, that's good. Uh, I'm not gonna we, that. we had this conversation last time, and I've had a few people in my DMs, um, including oh. Dylan, you know, Sanchez. And they're like, it's so true that you don't see GB lifters supporting GB lifters, but they'll go out their way to support like American lifters or other lifters. Mm. And it, I don't know what it is. It must be either it's an ego thing. They don't want to detract from I themselves. Think, or <laughs> I think it might be a little bit harsh to say no American lifters do that because some of my best supporters were American, to make it I'm perfectly honest. Yeah, like, I was going to say the Americans are big powerlifting would, fans also. So I've, I've had a lot of people like, uh, like, you know, just having conversations in DMs and things like that and sharing me stuff and things like that. And yeah, so like, uh, I don't think it's totally fair to say that they don't celebrate other people's success. But I do get what you're saying at the same time. Like, <clears throat> yeah, and I absolutely know what you mean about like... But again, again, Stephen, you know, in your time as well, we almost invested a lot of Americans. I know, I'm not going to go into that, right? I'm <laughs> 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 not serious, <laughs> Here we go. Here we you, go. You had that personal investment of American. In yeah. a plus, plus, you're Scream Emanuel. When you get on the platform, it doesn't matter who you're competing against. People want to come and see Scream smash it. 
Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, I, mean you, I mean, you were going up against Christoph, you know, we were going up against all these top lifters. But I kid you not, I watched powerlifting at that time. There was no one who was giving these guys a chance against Scream Emmanuel. Yeah. Why? Even though when people know Scream Emmanuel can't hold his last deadlift. But still, <laughs> you know, he, 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 he yeah. I love that. Nobody's given them a chance against me, and all I did was fucking disappoint them. <laughs> <laughs> You know, honestly, it's, it's typical Jurins, this is. Fucking hell. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, again, Steve, because I'm a fan, right? I mean, when, as soon as I heard you're coming back, I felt like a kid again. You know what I mean? Literally, I felt like, oh, my God. Because, honestly, people like me, I don't know, I don't know about what the rest will say, I never got to witness to watch you lift life. I never, I never had a chance. Oh, you've never lived. <laughs> you know, I still remember the commentators. I remember the commentators going absolutely fucking mental when you used to come out for your squat. Uh, because mm-hmm. the way you set up for your squat used to be very unique. Yeah. Um, you've had quite a few people copy you. I was the... about to ask how yeah. many people that fucking. I should have trademarked it. You should have trademarked it. That was the perfect trademark then as well. Um, I was going to say the closest we ever got to, I ever got to scream manual was probably Benji Orton because um, in terms of intensity and just screaming. <laughs> yeah, but Steve used to scream coming out for the lift. I saw Benji screaming back out in the warm up room just before, <laughs> before coming out. Deadly. <laughs> you know what, lads, right? Honestly, I, I don't scream anymore, you know. Are we gonna have what silent manual for for the can people? You, can you remember, right? How old are you? Not as old as me, clearly, because it's. Jurens is about fifty-two. I'm older. Than, <laughs> I, I, think, I think I'm older than you, Ed Stephen. No, how old are you? I'm thirty-five this year. Oh, well, I'm already thirty-five. So no, you're not quite, but we're the same age. So, ah, fuck it. I, Finally, someone. Jesus. What, <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm about to reference was even before my time, but I do know about it. So remember, was that, Chris, was that when Tony Cliff was forty? No, no. <laughs> back then, out. what? Back when, back when everything was black and white during the blitz. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, like, remember Prince? Yeah. No. So he came back. Like he, he went away for a while, came back, and then was calling himself the artist formerly known as Prince. I think I'm gonna do that. Yeah, I mean that's a good idea. Known as Screamer. Wow. I, I don't know what I don't know what's more annoying for me: the fact that it's that long, or the fact that Mo doesn't know who Prince is. Oh, Prince, you've <laughs> what, got what know. Wait, Mo, what you've got to know who is Prince this? is. If you just say what weight class is he it? goes, what weight class is he? Oh, are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I just got the reference. <laughs> what weight class is this Prince? Oh shit! Oh my god! Oh, like there's though. a brief sound bite. What the hell's going on? No, 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 no. Two seconds. Bite. I know, I know who Prince That's is. Right? <laughs> that actually made my fucking day. <laughs> Mo, you are such a fucking fetus. Nah, that was good. No, 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 calm down. That I was in power. Of- I was power of the mode. I was in power of the mode. So I thought we were talking about a lifter coming back calling themselves. God, Stephen literally said the artist formerly known as, and you're asking what weight class he was in? Probably 66s. <laughs> you to be said honest. his squat you said his squat self was unique. So that's he's an artist right there. So I th- I, I was just on a different wavelength. No, it's right. fine. It's all right, Mo. Don't worry, mate. Back <laughs> to sleep you go. There's absolutely no way you're digging yourself out of this, Mo. What weight class is Prince? Fucking hell. So do, you was... remember the, do you remember the powerlifter Prince Nassim, Mo? <laughs> nah, <I didn't> <laughs> so, Stephen, the comeback, are we talking about early next year, mid? Are you looking forward to qualify for the Brit? Because, by the way, the British might... So, since I know we all don't know the calendar, potentially the British might be November next year. Is that oh, something... Oh, that's pretty you? cool. Yeah. So that's that's probably something you can look forward to, like come back, get your qualify, and get to the British. That's plenty of time to get decent, to get to look decent enough, like as well. Hmm, very interesting. Okay, yeah. I mean, look, I've I've got no expectations. I think everybody else is gonna have expectations, but I've got no expectations. I think I've your, your, your name alone, your name alone being on the list on the roster is enough. 
Yeah. We've got a lot of people yeah, interested I in just. I genuinely seeing. don't get this. Like, I yeah. just, I don't understand why I'm popular in, in this. Like, really it's like, don't... it's like a Ray Williams coming to a local meet, you know? It's, yeah, it's, it's kind of really like. Not. Ray Williams is <laughs> it's really not. Hey, mate, at, at some point, everyone was chasing your dots or GL points or whatever it was back then. So you were you were legendary until unfortunately yeah, until, during sports that title I'm, now. Is but, until um, 2022. Yeah, that total record was there. You for were fucking still young. Yeah. Until last Didn't year. Didn't said this last week, like that only got broke last year. Yeah. 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 That's so wild. Yeah. I had no idea. Jurens Jurens did it first. Did you no, you first? did it first. No, I, I did. did I? I did it first on a Saturday, and I did it first on a Thursday. Yeah. Yeah, we, we just... Then uh, I somewhat, did it. Somewhat and then it. Tony's done it also, and then you've obviously cheated somehow and found yourself at the top, so... Are you talking about these IPF? <laughs> <or something>? Who cheated? <laughs> Me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're on about, we're on about IPF rankings now, or at GL point ranking. That's right. that's what the ranking we're talking about, Stephen. Uh, uh, Stephen. So until last year, you were still the best lifter this country has ever produced. Fucking hell! I'm the most charismatic. I'm the most fucking handsome. What? What? <laughs> what am I not? <laughs> so, and then because when you remember when you set these IPF point or dot, you were built like a fridge, and some of us had to find the formula to become fridges. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you're never gonna become a fridge with the way you eat. I'm trying, man. Jesus. What are you trying? You try a bagel and a fucking baked bean. You're not trying the entire day. I'm a good 85, you know. Come on, give me some respect, guys. No chance you were 85. Fucking hell. I was 85 when I was 14. (laughs) (laughs) Let's change the subject. Let's change the subject. I genuinely (laughs) think I was about 88 kg year seven, year eight. It's fucking wild. I was taking the piss there. I genuinely no, I genuinely was. was. I <laughs> genuinely was. Wild that indie. I was. I was. I was, I was, I was seventeen, <laughs> sixteen, seventeen, and one hundred and forty-eight kg. So like fucking oh, three, of, three of Turin's, I think. No wonder why you have got such a massive deadlift. Why I don't weigh that much anymore. <laughs> Me and Mo are just fellow one twenties. Yeah. <laughs> Let me chill, bro. Are you gonna Are you gonna try and make a weight cut for your first comp, Stephen, or are what you just five? gonna come in? What a vibe. Be easy enough. But you don't know how much you weigh. You might be one ten right now. Because I just saw you back there. I might be one fifteen. I'll still make one five. Who the fuck knows? Who cares? Yeah, but you've always been wide, haven't you? Do you know what I mean? Like you've always had a massive back. Yeah. Um. Hence the and big fucking chest, hence the big bench. I don't think my bench was that big. It was big. It wasn't it was, no, what, no, two, it was pretty two, good now. Two twelve and a half is the best I ever did. It was bigger yeah. than that. Better than that. That's <laughs> more than Indy. Sure, I don't, yeah, I was gonna say it's more than anyone <laughs> here. What you want about? It's more than Mo, it's more than I me. Say it's more than Mo as well, I forgot. <laughs> so, no, it's more than me, I'll take it. I'm I'm working on my bench, hopefully. <laughs> I don't know. I think two twelve in the one hundred fives is still a big bench, even to this date. Yeah, but not two thirty, though, is it? <laughs> it's not two thirty. When, when, you get a, when you get a ninety-three benching two forty, it's just like you're thinking, "What the fuck, man?" This exactly. Is... Like, yeah. I don't know. I reckon. You see, now with the numbers, I'm just. I'm <laughs> it. I'm just like, right, if I just do this, if I just do this, if I just do this, I do nine hundred. Uh, it's, it's a trap, man. It's a, it's a confusing uh, again, trap. Uh, you're coming for fun. You said you're coming for fun, no expectation or that. But at the end of the day, as competitors, we're always going to look at that number thinking, do you know what? I don't want to compete against people, but it would be nice if I can put these numbers left, right, and center. And I'm sure you want to build up your squat again because you've, you've left, you squatted more than more, and you probably come back and you want to score more than more anyway. <laughs> so that is probably could be a target thinking you know what you mean? Know what? <laughs> it's funny you say that right because the only one that I actually care about is deadlift deadlift fair enough the one that you it's the only one that matters 
It's the only <laughs> one. It's it's the only one that matters to me right now because it's the only. It was the one that fucked me up every single time. Was it? Was it tearing? Hand tearing? Or hands what, tearing? What? Grip just not there. Cutting weight. Hands cramping. All sorts. Oh, Mo's had that. Mo, it um... just never. Put, I just never was able to put it together. <clears throat> the only time that I did put it together was the Arnold's. Arnold. Yeah. Because I was gonna say that you have I mean, you have pulled three thirty before. Yeah, yeah. I think I went nine out of yeah. nine that day. Yeah. yeah. I think that's I went when, nine out of nine. That's that why you had the world record, isn't it, Teddy Arnold? Three thirty. Yeah, yeah. That's where that's where I got the world record squat and total. Hmm. Three yeah, three one yeah. is a one hundred five. Still a big squat as well. Yeah, massive yeah. squat. That's a massive, massive squat. That's a squat that more can't do today. Johnny. Why are you shot at Mo for no reason? But you know what? Yeah, I'm I'm just gonna leave him because Austin Perkins just mopped his <laughs> lifetime goal as a 75. Right. So Perkins, you don't have beef with me. Perkins is all American. The, all the 83s and 82.5 should be fighting Perkins right now. Perkins you know, is that's, the American world champion, though. And to be honest with you, you might as well be. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Perkins will win the eighty in the seventy fours and the eighty three if he wants it. Yeah, from the sounds of it, yeah, he, he can win both. So he can win one of five as well. So you must have got to ninety threes. Who me? Me? Yeah. You mean I must have go to Africa, go back farming? Bro? Nah, <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> you saying that? I'm saying you need to go back to ninety threes because you did really well at the silent worker as a ninety three. We won't awesome. talk about worlds. <laughs> What are you doing? You know what? You know, Steve Manuel doesn't know anything, right? Let's leave it there. Let's well, I'll send you some videos, Steve, of during Let's not start giving him IDs, world. right? Let's not give Steve IDs here, right? The Please do, because back. of all of you, he's the one that's giving me the most shit. This is what, this is what he does. He gives <laughs> the most anything. shit, and then he, he plays random cards. He's like, he'll call you a racist or something along the lines of that. That's just what Julian does. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not calling anyone racist. All I'm saying, you, all of you, just like one or five, bullying a small man. Before we, me. before we go off track, right, <laughs> Stephen. So there's you, the two lifters, looking at the top twenty in GB right now. Actually, all time, right. Everyone is still active apart from you and Luke Richardson and Sam Watt. But Sam Watt kind of hops in here and there. He's the, yeah. The, Fifth one year of it, but you and Luke Richardson. Unfortunately, we're never going to get Luke Richardson back. Um, back, he's yeah. completely gone. But how, how you, that era? There was you, Luke Richardson. How was that era like? Because obviously, Luke was also a massive talent as a junior. There was a lot of hype surrounding him. You were yeah. also peaking around that time. Also, he was peaking. So, what was the what was the GB team like going for internationals then? Because there were big names on the team, you know. Yeah. So I remember Luke, like. No, I didn't really get to like really interact with him all that much because I think it was it wasn't too long. It was like kind of around about the time when I was leaving that he went into strongman, I think. Yes. So and I mean he was a junior then, right? Like 21, 22 or something like that. Yeah. So yeah. I hadn't really saw more of that much and like, you know, like I'm a 30 odd year old bloke. I wasn't really well at the time I was 28, 29. I wasn't really hanging around with the juniors all that much. So like I didn't really get a chance to talk to him too much, but absolutely phenomenal talent and he's done the right thing. He's got way more potential to make more money in something like Strongman than what he than what he ever will do powerlifting. And yeah, he's just a fucking, he's a fucking big shit house. So yeah, what a fight. He's, I really hope he does fantastically well and I'd love to see him win something like World's Strongest Man at some point or just, just like something big in Strongman because that would then potentially put powerlifting on the map a bit more. Because yeah. you know they're gonna he's in interviews and asking like what his background was. Hopefully, name drops the IPF and everything and British powerlifting, and they'll hopefully get more eyes on that and get more people into the sport. Um, but well, yeah, like, I was what... watching, I was watching the strong man because you know there was Luke Richards and there was Pavlo back in back then. Pavlo was the uh, Ukrainian, or was he? U- yeah, I think he was Ukrainian. Um, so Pablo, so there was the strongest man that just had the deadlift competition recently. Pablo was supposed to compete in it, and they actually pulled clips from IPF World Championships and were putting awesome. there for like his back history. So I thought that was pretty cool, also. Yeah. That's class. But yeah, I mean, going back into that, then so um, like how the British team was at that time, I would say the best way to describe it was 
just improved. So, like, we've always had one or two really good lifters, but like, we would never be in contention for like the like meddling in the teams and all that sort of stuff. Um, but I remember a good few where we were like second or third in the medals or something like that, like at, at Europeans and at Worlds and stuff like that, which was really cool. Because oh, we won, we won the Europeans to the medals. Just, you don't need like to. You there. don't need to. Bl- no, we, I have to, come on! I won. Them. We won. Indy, didn't we win last year? Don't know what you mean, mate. What? <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I just had a ruin during this day. <laughs> Stephen Steve was, was taking us down memory line, and James was like, "Nah, actually, we've done better now." <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like just so much improved from when I did start to how it actually ended, and yeah, from the sounds of it, if Durant isn't lying, uh, it ended up just being even more successful. <laughs> it's got really good. It's honestly, it's 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 just been up and up and up for BP. I think yeah. over the last couple of years, um, other than world this year where I expected people to be better. Everyone, no, listen, don't turn your head. <laughs> I thought, so, I thought going, <laughs> they're fucked up. I thought going into Worlds this year, because we won best team at Euros. Right. Everyone was looking fucking strong, like incredibly strong. And I was like, this is the one, like there's a chance we can fucking do it. And then like fucking dominoes, cramp, 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 cramp. I was like, fuck oh, really? it. Yeah, speak to Tony. I think his back still hurts from carrying the team. <laughs> uh, but it's it's gotten better. It has gotten better. And there seems to be a lot of... I'm not sure how it was back then, but there seems to be a lot of support within GB lifters for GB lifters. So, like, the team talks, banter, sends memes in the WhatsApp groups, and everyone supports everyone sort of thing. Um, okay. What was it like back then? Was there a lot of team cohesion, or was it just sort of go and lift by yourselves and... Mm. I don't remember ever, ever being in a WhatsApp group, so none of that. Um, <laughs> Do you think that would have helped? Hey, with with the mental side of things, with just just generally lifting, like being a, being a more cohesive team, speaking to each other, doing things with each other, and I don't know from my personal perspective because I fucking hate group chats, and I would have muted it as soon as I was put in it. Fuck, I, but I don't think it would have changed. Bad, isn't it? Mm-hmm. He's just a mood killer. So, um, what do you mean I'm a mood killer? No, oh, him, God. him. He said he doesn't like group chat, and which one? Oh, okay. That, 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 that connection. Some people like to switch off, though, don't they? I guess. Durans, I just don't like to please everybody. You know what it is? I just, I'm just, I'm your old man. Like, I'm just, I like what I like, and I don't like anybody else, so I just keep. <laughs> That's why this is why Americans like you, mate. Because I want to live. You're an American at heart, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, just leading to that uh, in this question, just to add a little bit more. Or uh, apart from just the group chat, um, Stephen, or team getting together, doing squad or whatever in, um, in our time, like what we've been doing right lately. How was in the support in terms of like on the lifting day? Because now. Since I think twenty twenty two, I think world is almost like Team GB when we fly away, every single lift that is lifting, we're making the effort for the team to be there for them. Yeah, yeah. So, mm, that was always a little bit of a. If you didn't want to go, you didn't want to go, and you just you didn't have to go. Um. Like, everybody was always there for, like, the heavier guys. Um, as shit as it sounds, there wasn't a great deal of support for the for the women. Um, I mean, if I'm being perfectly honest, I'm not just saying this, like, to kind of look good. I would say I was at 90 95% of them because, like, I wanted their support, so I wasn't not going to give them my support. Mm. Um, the only t- the only ones that I would usually miss would probably be like the day before mine. I just kind of didn't want to be there and just like wanted to be focusing on myself. So I would usually miss the majority of the day before my competition. Uh, but other than that, I tried my best to be at all of them really. Um, and then when I was done, it was just a fucking free for all. I was getting on the piss and watching the supers. 
But yeah, so like it was kind of you just kind of did what you wanted to do. Some people would turn up and treat like a holiday and then compete just when they had to compete. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so like there was no real like mandatory rules on everybody being there or anything else like that. Like I think it would have been nice if the team generally was there for everybody else because you do form better bonds that way, you know? And like, yeah, I mean, I just made most of my bonds just through sitting and actually watching the comps with the guys and then having a little bit of mess about, fucking about in the stands and all that, like, but... Yeah. I think you'll really enjoy the atmosphere now. I'll be honest with you. Um, yeah. I think it's just, there's a lot more support within the team, I think, generally speaking now. Like, people are actually, like... The one I that one that always comes to my fucking head now. Christian is a ninety three kg lifter. His deadlift at the Europeans. There was so much noise from the fucking GB team. I was chewing air. You know, like you know when the atmosphere is like that. It's just so much going on that I actually physically couldn't turn up to the venue next day because I was fucking still buzzing from like the atmosphere. It's sort of it's turned into that style of of thing, and I think. Some people hate it, but I think generally speaking, for a strength sport, I think it gives you a bit of an extra like kick up the ass, yeah. um, and 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 just a bit of support from everyone in general. Um, going off that, I wanted to ask you, what are your your highlights from your powerlifting career? Like the things that are always there in the back of your head, and you and just, you just really to enjoy, was... and 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 on top was... of that, what things yeah. would did you? not like about the whole powerlifting thing? Well, the first thing that comes to my mind, my most favourite memory, probably meeting Durance back in 2016. What a day. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know back then he was going to be such a massive knob? Uh, no, he was such a nice, respectful gentleman. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, so, sorry, I was... To be honest with you, Indy, I was just waiting for you to stop finish to, to stop talking so I could say that. Just hit the piss. <laughs> I totally forgot what the question was. I'm so what, sorry. what are your highlights from your like powerlifting career, and what things do you wish were done differently? <laughs> right. Well, we'll start, with, we'll start with differently then, shall we? Uh, I forget what year it was. It might have been 2016, um, Estonia. So. I was in the uh, in the GB team for the Europeans. It might have been the first Europeans, to be fair. It might have been the first European classic. And I was nominated in the top two, heavily favoured the win. And, yeah, I ended up getting fucking shit-faced about three days before the competition and kicked out. So I didn't get the chance to win anything there. Um, and... Yeah, that's definitely one of the things that I would have liked to have changed. Um, another thing I probably would change would have been getting coaching sooner. Um, I did it all, did all my programming myself, not from the very start. Um, first coach with a guy called Mick Hunnam. Um, and are any of you in YNE? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm actually based in Newcastle. Yeah, I thought so. All oh, right, we'll have to train guys sometime then. Um, you might see him just walking around places because he, <laughs> he does. Yeah, so like uh, like Mick Hunnam, he was like my first coach at Gateshead and like anybody in the YNE probably like even still now probably sees him about and knows him and everything and he's just fucking ig- They've gotten rid of the Gateshead powerlifting, you know. Hmm? They've gotten rid of Gateshead powerlifting because they... I know, the I heard about that. Yeah, so, it's uh, sad. I saw Glenn on Sunday on Saturday yeah. when I was in Vision. He was telling us it's fucking shit that. <laughs> it's proper shit. It's fucking shit. Um, but yeah, I would have definitely gotten coaching sooner. Um, just I, I it makes me kind of wonder what I would have been like with another year or two under Mike's guidance before I got to where I was, like mm. because. I think I had it in my head. I remember this actually. I was considering coaching and I was thinking, right, I just want to get myself to an 800 kilo total to say I've done that. Then I'll get coaching. And then at some point I was just like, ah, fuck this. Like I need to, I, I need to change something. 
you've got the same idea that's very hard to change your own way of thinking without having some kind of external influence. Mm. So I just thought, fuck it, I'll just get coaching now. And then, whew, like, things went so much better really quickly, like, quicker than I thought they were going to. So if I pulled the trigger on that sooner, maybe I would have actually won something, like, um, <clears throat> sooner there. But, yeah, I mean, with all these things, though, like, it's hindsight's amazing, like, but in the moment, you think you're doing the right thing. Like, I wouldn't say I regret anything. Even the Estonia getting pissed, like all that I missed out on was the chance to win a European title. It wouldn't affect how I am as a person right now. I'd still be doing the same job as what I'm doing here. Um, but having going through that was just one more thing that added to my very, 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 very long list of reasons why I shouldn't drink anymore. And I'm six months sober now. So, right. like, congratulations. Yeah, cheers, man. Like, I don't think I'm going to drink again. That's the one thing everybody asks. Think you drink Mate, that, again? T- to be honest with you, yeah, we to do that in Newcastle, is, that's a proper accomplishment. So, <laughs> yeah. <congratulations. laughs> yeah. So, yeah, like, uh, the, 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 true genuinely, Gaza, the, pre, the true guys of British Palace was not Dylan, it was you then. What's that, sorry? The true Gaza of British Palace team, you know, it was not Dylan, it was you because you told Dylan how to drink, right? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Dylan would have learned how to fucking drink long before you met me, mate. <laughs> Growing up in South Shields, does fuck all else to do. He'll have been getting <laughs> he'll have been getting pissed in one of the local parks when he was fourteen or fifteen. Like <laughs> don't please don't put that on me because if I am going to coach somebody how to drink, they're going to fucking handle it a hell of a lot better than what he does. <laughs> 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 um, and then the other part of what you asked was coolest Your, things. Yeah, the the thing most memorable things, the the best things. Right, best things. Um, in no particular order, but this one is on a personal standpoint, coolest thing ever for me was breaking the world record, um, squat and total at the Arnold's in. Mm. Uh, I think it was Barcelona. Yeah, it was Barcelona. Like, right. yeah. obviously, for I mean, like at that point, nobody had done what I did, which you know is fucking cool in and of itself. But like, that room was fucking packed, like absolutely in an insane amount of people, and just having the people around me that were there. So like, I was on the same platform as Tony, like not just the same competition, yeah. but, like, same platform. Like, I'm squatting 331, and then he's squatting next or two lifters later. Like, it's just, it's awesome. Yeah. Like, and obviously, Tony's one of my really good friends from powerlifting. Now that I'm back powerlifting, we'll probably talk all the get all the time again now. Uh, but, yeah, like, he's somebody who I really, really respect. And, you know, seeing what he's doing into his 50s, that just gives me all of the... All the confidence that I'm going to be able to come back and do something good as well. <laughs> no, fair, fair enough. The only difference is you've managed to keep a full head of hair. <laughs> yeah, well, I've definitely. I, I might not be a stronger person, but I've got a stronger hairline. Yeah, <laughs> you got to keep that over him. Like, yeah, like a chopping board. You got to keep that over Cody. You got to remind him. When you was lifting, at one point you shaved your hair off. Maybe is that something to do again? Nah, I'm getting dreadlocks. Have you heard of Gavin Aiden? Is that oh, the God. guy who shaved it and then corn rolled it? Yeah. With the little gay top knot? <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Probably shouldn't say that in 2023, should I? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fucking out there now. Fuck it. It's fine. Jones is done worse. Jones is, yeah. <laughs> is done worse and said worse. It's fine. Yeah. So what's the crap with this uh, Gavin Aiden then? Oh no, he he also did the the um the Vi- he came for Vikings kind of American Vikings lifter star. claimed to be a Viking and came ninety three kilo lifter fairly strong the monster ninety three squats three thirty three thirty five but unfortunately just always gets a depth call um but yeah he he's done the Viking the, that right. Viking hairstyle okay he sounds insufferable. <laughs> 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 
um, I've got I've got one question for you. Um, just one there, question. Before you go into that question, just want to highlight one more of the awesome things that I saw. Okay. Ray Williams squatting a thousand. Like I yeah, was actually cool. I was actually in the building for the first time that happened. Um I don't remember the situation, but I think I might have gotten invited out to USAPLs for that. And yeah, because he did that at nationals first, didn't he? And then did it up, and then try to do it again at Worlds. Yeah. So I actually saw the first person in person squat a thousand pounds in the IPF, and I was literally right at the front. Oh, sick. That's what like, I said. You, you didn't. You had a lot of investment in America. You know, being yeah. invited to USAP or national. Who would yeah. get that chance? No one will get that chance. Only Steve Manuel can get that chance. I also, as well, actually, um, got tasked, I, I got tasked with being race security right after that squat. <laughs> so he had to go to the toilet or something like that. And um, fucking Susie and Matt Gary, they were handling them on the day. And they were just like, scream out, scream out, come here. You have to get Ray to the toilet. And do not let him talk to anybody. We need him back here as quickly as possible. So obviously he's just squatted a thousand pounds. He everybody was fucking trying to swamp him. So I'm <laughs> there by fucking dragging him along. <laughs> just dragging him along, kicking people, get the fuck up. No, don't talk to him. <laughs> oh days. If, if there's one thing I've heard, there are two things people talk about is Jezza. First of all, seeing Jezza in person. Because apparently he was just wide, like there oh, was yeah, wide, yeah. there was levels to wideness, and then also Ray Williams squatting, like those yes, two people were just fucking yeah. hell, yeah. yeah. Wild. Wild. I saw Jezza. I saw Jezza in 2019. That's the first time I saw Jezza in Sweden. <laughs> and of course, I know I, I, I can't. I'm not gonna say this, but I know I'm not a big guy. But I was behind Jezza. Even if he moves, you can't still can't see him. Yeah. That's how wide he is. He's fucking great. That's Another cool insane. thing was uh, actually through SBD uh, when I was one of their sponsored athletes. Um, obviously, I did like a lot of things for them, like at conventions and things like that. I, I remember um, seeing you at Body Power. Yeah, yeah, that was actually one of the things that uh, that I was going to highlight there. So being in my booth, we were like rotating with the different athletes, kind of like looking after it and everything. But after all that, we went and got dinner. So I got to have dinner with like Juno Savickas. And I think mm. I was sat next to him. Uh, that's pretty cool. him. Okay. Like that was fucking awesome. Um, who's the other one? American one, Bill Kazmaier. Yeah, Kazmaier. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Kaz. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't a big fan of him. <laughs> <laughs> Why was he? He's just a fucking typical obnoxious rude American. Fair enough. Yeah, fair. fair. I won't buy... You forget one thing though. I told you I wouldn't know about it. Good man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, one thing you forgot there, being the poster boy for British powerlifting for almost a decade. Even though when you left, you were still... Yeah, you were still on the posters. Every, every time I look at that post, I was so getting pissed off. I was like, this man is gone. Why is he still here? <laughs> <laughs> I have a classic, classic yeah. pose. But again, like, again, to say, again, I know people will have expectation when you come back, is... Whatever you have achieved in the past can never be forgotten. No matter what you do, no matter how much you squash it yourself, when you said you, you, you're in the pure gym, people don't know who you are because those fuckers, they don't know what powerlifting is, right? So Keep it that but, way. I don't want fucking anybody talking to us in pure gym. But the funny thing is like, be, because... But you, you train a vision though, surely you must have got... Well, what pure gym then. is it? Because I'm, I'm going to send them an email to say, do you know who trains there? May no no the the vision in Newcastle City Centre is like a it's a mix of everything. Yeah, really. I mean, like, I've, only, I've only been at that once. Oh okay okay. The I've one next to Central Station, the one next to Central Station is fun. Like you see some proper crackheads there once in a while. It's just people doing Shaolin monk movements or just I don't know what's happening. Yeah, which gym? Which gym you want about here? Yeah, vision. No 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 no. The pure gym next yeah, to Central yeah. Station. Right, I've never been to that one. Centre of I... Life. Yeah. The one I go to is uh, the Elden Square one, Elden Garden or whatever it's called. Yeah, yeah, I know Elden Garden ones, yeah. I've I've I I not been yeah. to the one um, near the centre of life yet. Yeah, that's not, yeah, it's fun. Uh, 
It's, it's actually Mo doing the fucking Shaolin movement, recording himself. <laughs> <laughs> oh my well, days! There was there was a time I was training that I met this old head, coolest guy ever, but literally Johnny Bravo in real life, insane upper body, skinny ass legs, Die. fifty. It was Sounds it was, like ins- it was... <laughs> oh, I got legs. Bro, you ain't got legs, bro. Oh, you know your legs are that big too. But anyway. your upper body is one, but your legs, bro, they they it's not the one. I know, I know. Black people are not blessed with legs. What are you on about? Hey, calm down. Mo's bro. got quads for days. <laughs> I no, can't I use them. Like you. No, I've got quads. I've I got can't quads. use them. I can't use them to squat, but I've got I've got quads. So. Yeah, no conjurance apparently. <laughs> I am also half Nigerian. Oh shit! Can really? You talk- How? Yeah, me dad's Nigerian. Oh shit! Really? Yeah, no, I look what like part, I, part- I know it doesn't look very convincing. <laughs> 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 what, what part of Nigeria is he from? Oh, here we go. If hmm? you know, if you if you do, you have any idea what part of Nigeria he's from? Right, I really don't know all that much because like he's never really been a part of my life. Like oh, I've yeah, not seen him all that much, but I believe. There's like a few. There's only like a few different tribes in Nigeria, right? And I think where he <laughs> came like from, three, three, four main ones, really. Yeah, yeah. The, the, like I think a shit ton where of smaller he's come ones, from actually. is the Igbo tribe. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, like Igbo, okay. and yeah. yeah, I think I, I got, I got talking that you know the fucking, I know the freshen up guys in the in the clubs. Yeah, I got talking to one of them, and like he's from Nigeria as well, and so okay. like, like my dad was Obioma. And he told me okay. that is how I he knew that I was evil, but I don't yes. know if that makes I don't know if that's true. That's or not. that's that's a very evil name. Yes. That's, yeah. me, it's really strange. that's pretty cool, man. That's pretty sick. Hey shit, we've been here Basically, for a long Mo's time. Mo's writing a book about British strength athletes that come from Nigeria. Nigeria. <laughs> The thing is, unfortunately, Bro, if you do, I if you do like this, you put me on the cover instead of Jurens, please. <laughs> <laughs> Jurens isn't allowed. He's the only Congolese lifter in the world. I know. <laughs> so, so wait, that is so. Two, wait, two seconds. That is so. I don't think a lot of people know you'll be half Nigerian. Do you know how insane that is? No, man, you know that's not. That's like Sabado podcast well, exclusive thing, right there. A white guy with an afro. I yeah, don't how know, do you mate. know? I knew, I knew there was. I didn't know it was Nigerian, but I knew. Yeah. Yeah. Me, me, I was making. Afro, you could tell, I thought yeah. maybe you were the Caribbean, half half Jamaican, half Irish. But you were. Jurens <laughs> <laughs> just. Oh, I'm te- I forget ancestry dot com. Send it you to fucking kingamu dot com. I was Jam Irish. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is yeah. this is why we don't listen to Jurens. Yeah, but because the Nigerian side of you did not give you the deadlift, it's really confusing to me. Mate, he had the he had the highest geo point ever in the UK for a long. Talking the Nigerian genetics deadlift. did a lot already. Talking about deadlift, you know what? Do you know what? I can't fucking wait to come back and pull three fifty. Please. Do. <laughs> <laughs> I can't fucking wait to come back and pull three fifty. This is where you <laughs> ask Jurens what's his best deadlift. There you go, you little fucking wanger. Ask Jurens <laughs> what his best ever deadlift is. Is it not more than Steve Emmanuel? What's your best ever deadlift like? 335. 335? In yeah. comp? He, he's done 335.5. In comp? Yes, but indeed. What have, but, what, but what have you done in oh, the Oh yeah, gym, that was that's a silent worker, mean. wasn't it? Exactly. What have you yeah. done in the gym? That's what really matters. Anyway. In the gym. <laughs> With straps, that's all I care about. That's <laughs> you... <laughs> I'm really good at that. No, no, you've lost me. You've lost me. What have you done <laughs> in the gym with straps? Go. I hate um, straps. Uh, the heaviest I've done with straps is 275. You fucking asshole. <laughs> I, can't, I can't use straps. I don't know. How I don't you... like straps either. You, that's the wrong chat this is. <laughs> that's the wrong chat, Stephen. Wrong chat. We're all anti strap. Yeah, we don't like straps. <laughs> This is what I said. You invested too much of Americans. No, 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 no. genuinely, like I've just, I've just, like, I think I've gotten to the bottom of my problems with deadlift. I'm not gonna say how I know this. I just know. <laughs> okay. And then we'll just see what happens here. 
But don't be surprised if I can come back and actually and actually do some decent deadlifts. Obviously, if you, if, you pull, if you pull a third deadlift, why I want you to just write, it, write down the secret and send it to Mo. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. what? It's fine. You've I'll got the same it. problem as me, Mo. <laughs> I, I've just been I've I've just had to pull insane numbers for the last two competitions, and he's been, been unlucky. He's been unlucky. I get that. Yeah, I get that. So you're uh, you you are a deadlifter, right? Basically, I'm a deadlift to try to bench. Yeah. So, yeah. so you just kind of think like you've got that mentality of whatever I need to fucking put on the bar. Just to win. put on the bar, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like so, I always knew, I always knew I couldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why you're squatting. You know I mean? Far ahead of the subtotal as I possibly could, and then just hope to have a respectable deadlift on the day, which never happened. Yeah. Nah, it'll change. <laughs> Well, um, Stephen, have you got a coach now, or are you still doing your own thing? Nah, I'm going to fuck about for now. Like, it's one of them for me. Like, main thing for me is just dropping some body fat, getting closer to 105. I'll weigh myself soon. I'll probably be low 110s, 112, something like that, I reckon. Um, But yeah, like, I just really want to just fuck around for like a year or so, I guess, and then... I'll probably I'll probably go back to Mike Teixeira for coaching um if he has the time because that was such a good relationship the first time he's an awesome guy um and, and yeah like so I don't know if you guys might know this like he's put it a few times but like I've got I've got like the deadlift I've got the squat shoe that I broke the world record in um so like I have that shoe and so. I gave the other one to Mike. Oh, nice. Yeah, so, like, I've got one, he's got one, just, like, because he helped me get to that. Mm. So, like, yeah, like, I so like, I, I kind of, like, I do, like, it's one of them, like, yeah, he gave me success there, but we also formed a good friendship, mm. and that's more important. Like, I trust him, so I wouldn't really think about anybody else for powerlifting coaching. Makes so sense. when I go back into it and if it gets serious, it'll one hundred percent be my share again. But for now, I think it'll just be wasted money. Mm. Like it's one of them where I don't really need to worry about my total right now. I don't care about that. The main focus is on getting my body weight down. I'll probably be able to achieve getting a higher total and getting body weight down at the same time for an extended period of time and then there'll be a bit of a carryover and I'll lose some on my total and everything but yeah there's no need to do that right now but at some point it'll come especially if I think that I might have to, to do something you have to because the more you talk to powerlifters people like us now you got us this is the friendship you created we're gonna give you we're giving you shit on your lift now Indy will be telling you stop dropping your deadlift every time <laughs> <laughs> That's the beautiful thing about social media, though. I can just fucking block this anytime I want. <laughs> <laughs> nah, these lot know I'll just turn up to their house with a handwritten note that saying, Stop being shit. <laughs> I've got one final question, Stephen. You've done the powerlifting route, you've been highly successful. You've done the bodybuilding route, you've been highly successful. You didn't compete as much as you'd have liked, I reckon, but the physique and what you're able to present on the platform was insane. Which is harder, being an, a top level powerlifter or being a top level bodybuilder? How do those two stack up? Are they completely different beasts, or is one a lot tougher than a lot? Like people claim, bodybuilding is a lot tougher than powerlifting. I feel like the answer should be bodybuilding, but my own personal experience of it, because it was so different, and I really enjoyed the learning aspect of just training a different way but also the posing aspect of it as well so like the routines was fun like i had so much more fun bodybuilding because of how new it was and how completely different it was i'd say powerlifting was harder but if then that's just my own personal perspective and a big part of that will also be just because of how much I hated powerlifting at the end as well. So, like, when I came in doing bodybuilding, it was such a 
it was a relief to be doing something that I wasn't necessarily expecting to be the best at or to be close to the best at. So that took a lot of pressure off. So the pressure made powerlifting harder for me because I just couldn't, I couldn't deal with it at that time. Like if I had my mind now, 10 years ago, I'd have won a world title. I know for a fact I would have done, but I didn't. So I didn't. <clears throat> um, and yeah, so I definitely think without a doubt, bodybuilding is harder than powerlifting. But just because of those circumstances, it was far easier than my last few powerlifting competitions. And so much, but yeah, there's not a doubt in my mind that bodybuilding is harder than powerlifting, though. But and that, it, it's a, it's a hard comparison to make as well. Like they are just so completely different. Like, yeah, I think I think I think what happens is a lot of people online on the surface see bodybuilding training higher reps, high intensity. You get after it while they see the normal level powerlift, the entry level powerlifters. Are usually on the phone in between sets or having fun talking all the time but when you get to that high level of powerlifting where there's the pressure of competition there is fuck i've got a low 300 kilos on my back and i need to make this move out of p7 because i know my competition is doing 340 i need to be at 320 you know that's a that's a completely yeah. different pressure expectations so i i think at the top level that's probably about the same amount of pressure really um but yeah. the, if you have fun with one it's always going to be easier a lot easier yeah like, so for me, I, I mean, I just chose the one that I enjoyed the most there as being the easiest. And you've got to remember, like, I didn't get to a high level in bodybuilding. I came mm. second in the qualifier, didn't place at the Nationals, which I thought was bullshit, still do with this day. Um, and never made it to any international competitions. So you could also say I didn't really get to a high level there. Um, I think if I took it seriously, I would have found it really hard. Um and the pure re like, the main reason for that is what I like about powerlifting is like it, it nothing can be totally objective. Like you still have mm. judges who are like making an observation and saying, Did you squat deep enough? Or I don't know, was your fucking elbow at the perfect angle? I've heard these bench rules are fucking ridiculous now. And with deadlift, were your shoulders fully back, were your knees locked and everything? So there is elements of subjective uh, so, so objectively it's did i lift more weight than the guy who i was competing against yes i would mm. oh the internet connection's unstable can you see everything all right yeah, yeah fine yeah so from that respect it's easier to swallow if you don't lose if you don't win a competition because yeah. you can just say Right, well, that guy just lifted more weight than me on the day. But with bodybuilding, you could have two people whose physique does not change from one competition to the next. One will win on one day. Then it'll be a different set of judges who are looking for different things. Like their idea of a better physique is completely different to the other panel of judges. And then that could be just as easily flipped around. So that would be... That would fuck me up quite a bit. Yeah, I couldn't deal with that. That would fuck me up loads because, and think of it this way as well, like you might spend years training in a particular way to build yourself in a particular way. And then the criteria for what they want in a better physique, that could totally change. And then you've trained all of that to look a certain way to then not be what they're looking for. That's fucked. That's so, I think that's the hardest part about it. it is, again, what you said, it's the work you put into it. Because again, as you say, in powerlifting, I put the work, I lift more weight, I win. Simple. Yeah. I mean, in bodybuilding, building, you put the work, and you still don't win. Because yeah. someone's physique is a particular one they don't want. They, did, well, they, they need it, the real one is not. Just to me, that's harder. And um, I think me, my, my last one would be um, Stephen Hayes. Since you're coming back to powerlifting and you are a very good friend with Jordan, would you lure Jordan back to powerlifting too? Because I know he's not a fat cunt anymore. Big Jord, I know. Fucking slender Jord. Yeah. I don't know. I... 
I think Jordan might be done with it as well. Is it that? I really don't know. Because I've seen him volunteering across the country to some of the biggest meetings we've, we've held since you've, you've gone, right? Yeah. I was in Manchester when I broke my, when I, um, I, I took Dylan record on the squad, the one that didn't hate me until today, Jordan was there. He's the one that actually was totally loaded, even though he was Dylan's friend, but he totally loaded. But anyway, so basically, he's been volunteered to these big meets. So to me, is he in way or is he done with the sport? I haven't really had this conversation with him yet. But is he mm. done with the sport? If he is, is he just want to give back? Or is he thinking about coming back? I don't know. I, look, there's one thing that I'm not going to do is try and put pressure on anybody. Mm. If he's happy with his decision and decides that it's not right for him to come back, I've got absolutely, like... Look, it took me seven years, six, seven years to decide that I might want to make a comeback. Might take him a similar amount of time. He might want to come back or he might just be happy with what he's doing. But what I would say is it doesn't matter what is going on. Like, if he needs to talk to me about anything, I'm there for him. Like, so if he does want to come back, but on the fence, maybe, if he hears this and doesn't want to have a conversation about it, reach out, George. You know I'll always fucking have time for you. But... If he's happy, I'm not gonna fuck it. I'm not gonna try and fuck him into coming back because for me, if any like it took it took Dylan about five years of just throwing it in there now and again to convince me to come back. And yeah, I was just like, nah, I'm not coming back. I can't be fucking asked. Like I, I remember when COVID came in when he bought his kit, he said to me, Oh, I'm gonna get Steven to start training with me in the garage. So I to give him the to give him the love, the vibe of the sport again. I was like, "Are you sure?" I was like, "Oh, watch, man!" And the first session you guys did, he sent me a video. He said, "See, he came. He was training with me." I was like, "Man, keep on doing your work." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, like, do you know what? Right, yeah. genuinely, cannot tell you just how much I fucking love that kid. Like, he's fucking awesome. Like, do you know what? Like. Like I I moved back to South Shield about six, seven years ago or something like that. And just all the way through that time, he's just been nothing but a friend. Mm-hmm. Like he's just constantly reaching out and just like it look it got annoying as fuck at times where he's like, <laughs> Oh wait, man, just come back and compete. And I was just like, Dylan, will you fuck off? I I don't want to hear it. But Honestly, hands down, over these last few years, being the biggest supporter like, consistently. And yeah, like just. I mean, just he's, he's, a, he's an awesome guy. Absolutely awesome guy. He just can't hold his drink. Yeah, he can't. I know. I know that. I know. I know. The first time he met my missus, my missus said to me that every time I go to international dinner, my missus always said, Can you keep it up? Even though she only met Dylan once. <laughs> Because she had to, literally was in Sweden, in the middle of the night, 3 a.m. in the morning, you know, outside the hotel screaming my name. I was like, for fuck's sake, I'm not getting out. <laughs> this is the hotel. Went outside, pick him up from the street and chucked him at the reception. <laughs> awesome, man. He's fucking awesome. Uh, uh, but yeah, like, honestly, you have so much love for that guy. Like, he, he is a big, big reason why I'm coming back. And it's because what you were just saying there, him saying like, oh yeah, I'm going to get him to come and train in the garage. Like he's been planting this seed for fucking years, mate. He's a huge reason why I'm coming back. So if anybody is listening to this and is like genuinely excited about my return, I don't know why you would be some fucking tit. Like you've got him to thank genuinely. So send him a message and just say, thanks Dylan, because I don't think I'd be coming back. If he's having fucking badgering us, but that's how I go on the on the podcast because I just message him. I was like, listen, give me give me Stephen on the podcast. He was like, would you mean Steve Manu? I was like, yes. He was like, okay, give me two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> like, just not, if you want to have us on again, just ask. Like, <laughs> honestly, like, like, but when it comes to this sort of stuff, like, I I'll do podcasts with anybody if I don't know who they are. 
if it ends up being a shit conversation, I'll just fucking rip them. Like, <laughs> it's fine. Like, I've genuinely had a really good time yeah. So, like, I was ripping Duran just for fun because he kept calling me a fat cunt and saying I was old and making Alzheimer's jokes and shit like that. But, <laughs> yeah. Uh, anytime, anytime his one is on, just let us know. I'll make time. Oh, good man, good man. Um, so, on that note, uh, mate, uh, Mo, have you got any last questions? No, nah, that's it. Man. I've got we a have, question. A I've got a you. question for you, Durans. So, you and Dylan, you clearly like text back and forth a bit, right? Yeah. Can I ask you a question here? Go on. Have you got a bet on with him about what I'm going to total tomorrow in the gym or something? Uh, do what you yes, you do! <laughs> Oh, you so do, don't you? <laughs> oh, come on. That's private. Why are you asking me? You put me on the spot, you know? Jeez. You little twat. <laughs> you bet against me, haven't you? No, I didn't. Oh it's just it's between me and Dylan. <laughs> Dylan. Dylan messaged me this morning going... Are you ready to hit 770 in the gym tomorrow, big lad? <laughs> and I was like, well, I mean, I saw the, I saw, that's why I keep on asking you. I saw the 780 you said before you buy a membership. Remember the question I asked you if you if you remember I said, how is that going? Because... <laughs> <laughs> so you wanted the inside track. You wow. little asshole. I knew it was a bet on. <laughs> I knew there was a bet on. I fucking knew it. Like, because he messes that this morning. Then I goes, I mean, if I'm honest with you, mate, I'll be happy with 750. I just walked 13 miles yesterday. My legs are fucking killing. And he's just like, ah, you got 770 in your life. <laughs> so you, I knew it. <laughs> Shit. Oh, man. I hope, I hope you get that 750, though. Oh, I'm fucking going to try so hard for 770. <laughs> <laughs> oh, honestly, man, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go and find some cocaine before. I fucking go and find some cocaine. <laughs> man, man. Uh, so, one thing that I will say though, it probably wouldn't count either way because my hand still isn't good enough to deadlift without straps. So whatever total I get tomorrow doesn't really count anyway. Doesn't matter. You will count. It's strength is strength. You will count. It's a gym PB. For okay, now. right. 770's getting done then. <laughs> well, be better. <laughs> oh man, oh. it's been that. Uh, Stephen, it's been really a pleasure to chat to you again. It's been, again, as I said, me, I've been a fan since 2016. When you left, you went and did um, Kim, Kim Kardashian and bodybuilding. I hated it. I, I mean, I know people are smoking up, but here, you doing bodybuilding, you did great. To me, every time I saw your post, that's one of the reasons I blocked you. Because every time I saw, <laughs> I'm being honest, every time I saw you bodybuild on Fingla, because what was pissing me off the fact that I knew the amount of talent you had, what you were capable or to become in terms of like in the sports we are today. Today we have go the Taylor Howard people talking about it, Ray William, what they've done, and all these big names. Steve Emanuel was there at that time. Do you know what I mean? He was there. That's the name Steve Manu was there. So when I saw, I started seeing six packs, I started seeing back pose, I'm thinking, what the fuck is this country doing, man? He just, he just ruined his, his talent to go and do this. So yeah, but least hearing that you're coming back, Steve, is like, to me as a fan, I'm really, I can talk about this with passion because I'm happy, mate. You know, I'm happy and I will be probably one of the first to be in that first me of you when you come back. You wouldn't be surprised if you see me sitting on the, the stand watching, even at individual. So, yeah. Um, so more pro probably hasn't paid his, his internet, his internet yet, as always. Yeah. <laughs> hey, calm down, calm down. I'm here. I'm trying to sort off food because it's like 10 p.m. <laughs> okay, okay, cool. Yeah, because I know Steve might need to go to bed as well. So, on the <laughs> end, guys. Thanks, Steve, and uh, definitely we will catch up again. So we'll let you train now and get a little bit of vibe about the environment now, about powerlifting, where it is. And Just have fun, man. Honestly, the, 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 if one thing I can say, I think over time you will find a lot of new people will most likely, even in Vision, because I've been to Vision a few times. It, I live in North Shields now, so it's a bit of a trek to get down there. Um, but 
a lot of, a lot of new people will start noticing you. you as soon as people see what you've done what you accomplished social media is a massive thing right now i know you block whoever slides into your dm and has been a bit cocky or annoying just block them and go but a lot of people are very interested and excited for powerlifting right now honestly you'll be a little celebrity um just walking through newcastle town center <laughs> so don't don't be surprised when things start kicking up again I, that um, will make me so uncomfortable Man, just have fun. <laughs> just have fun with it, man. It, it'll, it'll be, it'll be really cool. Our, our African and Nigerian brother, be ready to be comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll have to make some Honestly, kind of mafia. <laughs> man, and now that we keep on talking, the more and more I see the Nigerian features, I see everything. So yeah, so yeah, I, I respect that because I. I always thought you were a weird looking Geordie in the first place, but I, I totally <laughs> understand it now. <laughs> you just saw me going, fucking hell, look at the Afro, I'm not white guy. <laughs> uh, uh, mate, that was, that, it was really a pleasure, mate. Um, so I will let you guys go and get ready, have dinner, guys. To all the listeners that are listening to us, guys, this is the story of Steve Romano coming back. Please send us the comment, the feedback, or anything. Stephen is open to messages. Just as he said, don't be afraid to drop a message. But if he's you're annoying, he's just gonna block you. So <laughs> I'll give you some shit first and then block you. Cool, you heard that, guys. And um, yeah, until next time, guys. Peace out. Thanks, guys. Yes, lads. Pleasure. Okay.